All right, so welcome to another rapid fire business story of the week. This is part of our rapid fire series. And today we have an incredible guest with us, someone who's achieved extraordinary success and is here to share their unique business journey with you. We're excited to hear their insights. So let's welcome them to the show. All right. So as this is our rapid fire series, we've got one minute or less to answer each question. So in a minute or less, give us the elevator pitch to your story and your life. Go. All right. So thanks for taking a minute to be interviewed here on business story of the week. Really appreciate it. You're going to be having a show host that will act as a mediator for the program today, but the interview is going to be done by me via this recording. This is a new format that we're testing. We haven't done it before. The shows run over 300, 400 episodes so far, and this is something totally new that we're trying. So, on this show, this new version of Business Story of the Week, we bring rapid fire interviews with some of the most interesting minds in business. In the past, we've had people like Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank, Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Chuck E. Cheese and Atari, and one of the first people to hire Steve Jobs. We've had Chris Voss, the FBI hostage negotiator, and the list goes on and on. So you are in good company. This episode that we're recording today will go out to over 100,000 subscribers throughout all the different social media channels. And we're trying something new today. The questions will be asked by this video itself, and I may or may not appear in the final cut. So it's very possible that this video will be just you on the show. Now, each question is designed for a one minute answer. And trust me, one minute is longer than you think. At the end of the interview, please stay in the room so that your host can wrap things up. Now let's dive in. All right. So welcome to another rapid fire business story of the week. This is part of our rapid fire series. And today we have an incredible guest with us, someone who's achieved extraordinary success and is here to share their unique business journey with you. We're excited to hear their insights. So let's welcome them to the show. All right. So as this is our rapid fire series, we've got one minute or less to answer each question. So in a minute or less, Give us the elevator pitch to your story and your life. Go. Uh, I'm Howard Moskowitz. Uh, my vision or my uh, goal in life is how do you tell the pe right people the right story to make them either uh, originally buy, now comply with medical instructions, or with students, how do you get them to ask questions so that they can become educated? The goal is to use today's technology and in so doing, make it so much fun, so simple that it's engaging like video games. I want to turn it over to Tim. Tim. So that's fascinating. And I would love to dig a little bit deeper. So tell us a bit more about what you're working on today that you're most passionate about and believe will have the biggest impact. Well, I'll start first. Uh, the thing that I'm working on is actually with Tim, and that's called Lot Director. Imagine the following, that you're driving into a parking lot for a car salesman or even for a, a strip mall, and they know uh, your license plate, and therefore they can figure out who you are and they know from our science of mind genomics the likely level of interest you would have in different items and different messages. What if they could anticipate your desires and actually serve you with what you want? So this next question is one that every entrepreneur has dealt with. Tell us about a time where you failed. We often say failure is the first step to success. So think about a time where you failed in the past. What happened? What did you learn from it? I failed many times when I brought this idea to uh, various people uh, like uh, 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 Shop and Stop and other kinds of stores. And I realized that people have to be ready for new ideas. 
that they, using our science, they could not think of the messages, so they totally disregarded it. They said, this is too difficult. What I learned is you had to have a system that was easy for people to use with artificial intelligence, that people would not have to do hard thinking. And that was incredibly insightful. I would say that the business took off when ChatGPT became very popular. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. And we're definitely going to have to have you back on the show to dive deeper into each of these questions. But for now, one thing that I often say is, and I tell this to my employees and the people who work with me and for me all the time, is that when a tree falls in the forest, if nobody hears it, did that tree actually fall? This brings me to this next question. How do you make sure that all of these amazing projects that you're involved in get noticed? What marketing and advertising methods have worked best for you? You've got a minute. Let's go. I also think it's a matter of timing. I think when we realized that we also had to do God's work in educating people in making the world healthier by having people listen to their medical professionals, healthcare professionals, we became more successful when we wanted to use this for social good, not just for money. That was so awesome. We're definitely going to dive deeper into this on a later show. And as we approach our last question, before we ask people how people can get a hold of you, how people can reach you, learn more about the work that you're doing in your company, and we will include all that information in the show notes. What I wanted to ask you is what is one piece of advice that you would offer to your younger self? to our audience and to somebody, especially somebody who's just starting out in the same niche that you're in, but just doesn't know how to start or get going. This is a come as a surprise. My father told me, put it between hard covers, publish, publish, publish. Don't talk. The right people will come along at the time. And uh, I did that. I've published papers now. I've got a PhD from Harvard 56 years ago. I started writing and writing and all of my science is embodied in the papers. It doesn't matter whether they listen to me, they will happen upon it and wonder, look at this marvelous thing. This guy or this woman or this person knew how to convince kids to do experiments. And he wrote about this 20 years ago. Why didn't we notice it? So uh, the, the, the long and short of it is, they're not going to notice what I'm saying, but they'll read it about it, whether I'm here or not. And as long as it's a socially relevant approach that makes money for people and that does good for society, it will happen. And all I have will have done is been God's emissary to give this technology to the world. Just do it. The famous words, fake it until you make it, and write. Put it between hard covers. Write, 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 and when you finish writing, write again. Nothing will so distill the ideas as the inner uh, editor that you have in your mind. Write. People will read it, and they will read it maybe not right now, but they will read it in months or years and send it out. Do the experiments, do your homework, and write.